Let's talk, first of all, about free elections, free and fair elections, because it was only a, a week or so ago we were talking about Putin's sham of an election. And a couple of weeks before that, I was uh, bemoaning the disappearance of the Fixed Term Parliament Act here in the UK, which for a few brief years robbed the incumbent Prime Minister of uh, the ability to set the date for a general election. And the reasoning behind the Act uh, of 2011 was to stop Prime Ministers or their party from choosing a date that suited them. Uh, they, they, basically, they, they were getting a partisan advantage. It was, in my view, a really smart bit of legislation. It allowed for elections when, when a PM lost confidence or, or when two-thirds majority of MPs approved a different date. But unsurprisingly, being a smart bit of legislation, of course, it wasn't popular with politicians who preferred manipulating dates for their advantage. And uh, would you be surprised if I told you it was Boris Johnson who did away with that uh, that law in a single day, if I recall, uh, to get his own way. And the reason I'm sharing this really is to indicate the, the different approaches that different politicians and different parties have towards elections. Do you attempt to play as fair as possible by the electorate, by us, the people, or do you do the opposite? Think carefully, because what we're talking about here is the very essence of our democracy, how and when we, the people, get to exercise our franchise. Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, last week hinted at October as a possible date for a general election. He was he'd been questioned by a Lord's Select Committee. And October would be a really interesting date, as many are suggesting it would favour the Tories. How? Well, because some 300,000 18-year-olds will be a tad distracted by their university freshers week when students are traditionally, <laughs> I'm supposed to tell you, settling into their new halls of residence or rented houses. But what we actually mean is, is they're going out partying a lot, as well as settling into their, their halls of rented houses. And thus, they're less likely to be focused on applying to join the electoral register for their new locale or acquiring photo ID that will be compatible with the government's new voter rules, which deem young people's travel photo ID pass to be no good for polling day, but old people's bus passes are just fine. Old people, of course, more like to vote Tory, maybe less so after Jeremy Hunt's budget, budget attack a couple of weeks back. An October election, potentially, what, just two weeks maybe after most freshers' weeks in, in many university towns? would not leave councils enough time to put thousands of new students on their electoral register. I know some of you are thinking postal votes. Well, since 2021, the government has been criticised for, quotes, inaction over highlighting how students could use postal votes. So we have to ask ourselves why the Tories aren't promoting postal votes to students. And of course, I would suggest that there is an easier way of doing all this. But again, it was cancelled by the Tories, because in 2015, up to 2015, uni universities registered all their students on the electoral roll en masse at the start of each year, ensuring everybody got a vote. It's almost, it's almost as if the current shower it's, don't want young people to vote. And I wonder, I just wonder, maybe you can help me out here, dear listener, I just wonder if this could have anything to do with the poll I read the other day, a YouGov poll, that found just 1% of 18 to 24-year-olds plan to vote Conservative at the next election. Just 1%. Now, young people never vote Tory, some of you shout. Well, you, you're wrong. You're wrong. Unbelievably, to my, to my mind anyway, in 1983, Margaret Thatcher won 42% of the youth vote. She was nine points ahead of Michael Foote. In 2010, David Cameron won 30% of the youth vote. Uh, even in the Labour landslide of 97, John Major still won 27% of 18 to 24-year-old votes. 27%. <laughs> Some of you may say, what was wrong with those people? But I'm thinking, how do we go from 27% to just 1% today? I also stumbled on this corker, a story that suggests if the Tories don't love young people, they certainly love elderly expats. So while we're talking about young people struggling to get a vote at the next election, Sunak and co have quietly given a vote to those who've lived abroad, expats who've lived abroad for 15 years or longer and paid no tax in the UK during that time. 2.2 million voters are being brought in that previously were disenfranchised. And some may say, that, <laughs> sadly rather, if the Tories are thinking this is a great way of getting extra votes, they may be disappointed to read that, that two-thirds of those 2.2 million may resist the urge to vote Tory as they're still seething apparently over the terrible job the Conservatives have done of Brexit. So we're asking whether or not the Tories should be cynical and play to their strengths, avoid their weaknesses, call an election in October when they will hopefully, in their views, deny Labour many, many thousands of votes, tens of thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands of votes? 
Or do they do the right thing by democracy and look at empowering the widest possible, the widest possible proportion of eligible voters? It's, I can't, I, I, I can't even believe I'm asking this question, but I think I've set out, I've set out a case that we are looking at a deliberate, at a deliberate attempt to disenfranchise people who might not vote Conservative. 0345 606 0973. Maybe you think I'm being overly cynical. Maybe you think Rishi Sunak's not cynical enough. I'm going to turn for guidance first uh, to Chloe Field, Vice President for Higher Education at the NUS, the National Union of Students. And she joins me this Sunday morning. Good day to you, Chloe. Hiya. Um, the first thing, when I first saw this story uh, in The Observer last night, my first thought was postal votes. Uh, are we looking at a lot of fuss about nothing? And then I did a little bit of research and it became very clear that Next to nothing has been done to persuade young people that they could vote by post. I mean, next to nothing. Is this a deliberate attempt to disenfranchise students? Um, yes. Well, I, I believe that there has been consistent attempts to kind of disenfranchise young people. And this young people are already feeling disenfranchised. We have seen continuous kind of uh, cuts to everything that is surrounding us uh, throughout our lives. I'm 24 years old, so the kind of first things I remember was cuts being taken to my uh, local council and leisure centre uh, when I was 10 years old, and I've continuously seen kind of governments letting us young people down. So, of course, young people are already feeling disenfranchised and feeling like no one's kind of in our corner and the kind of it, the new legislation on photo ID and now uh, kind of an October election, which could disenfranchise a lot of young people starting university or, you know, going back to university. It's a really massive issue, but it's unsurprising to us that the government would do this. There are going to be some listeners today that will just say, lazy students, get out of bed. You've got the internet. Look online. Find out how to get a vote. Stop making excuses. What, what do you say to them? Well, it's all right for someone to say that if they are, say, 40 years old and they've been voting for years. However, if you're 18, you've never voted before and there's not much education in the like state school curriculum um, about voting and your kind of electoral p power that you hold as soon as you turn 18. So... Which turn 18, you, it, you're learning about this new political system and then you're expected to vote. And you're voting for the new government, essentially, and that's a lot to hold. So it's it's understandable that a lot of young people find that overwhelming. And I haven't just got to grips with that. There needs to be that education, that understanding. Of course, you could just Google it, but where do you start? And I think we need to give young people the best opportunity to be able to uh, get to the polling booth well, and th understand that. This leads me on to my devious next question, Chloe, because mm. uh, I, t I totally understand the position you hold at the moment. Well, let's just say you are Rishi Sunak. I know you've got so much money, you can't even understand why you've bothered turning up in Downing Street, but you're there. You're there in Downing Street. You've got to call an election. You're mindful of the fact that 99% of people under 24 aren't going to vote for you. Would you... Would you make sure that you got the widest number of people voting or would you ensure you got the fewest number of opposition voters voting as as this is what the october election i just wondered mm. how cynical even you might be if you were running the country you, you you're, you're looking like you're going to be wiped out at the next election would you be tempted to be as cynical as maybe sunak might be well firstly i would have put it changes on for young people's lives while I was in term, so I, young people wouldn't hate me. Um, <laughs> but also, you know, we pay our taxes to this government. We expect there to be some form of democracy in this country, even though it doesn't feel like it right now. So, you know, yeah, if I was cynical and I had no care about democracy and civic rights, you then yes, yeah, you wouldn't do, yeah, you would do that. But yeah. I do care about that, so I wouldn't personally do that. That's a, 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 a really good answer. And just and finally, just before I let you go, what is the NUS, what are universities doing to raise awareness of this issue, to try and persuade young people to get out there and vote or register to vote, which is actually the matter at hand? Yeah, so what, um, at NUS, what we're doing is providing free ID cards for students so that they can 
ensure that they have that voter ID before they get to the polling booth. Um, and then also we're campaigning uh, for universities to set up auto enrollment, which basically means when you register for uni, you can just tick a box and then you're registered to vote. It takes out a lot of the admin um, when uh, admin right to idea. register to vote. Uh, but we just need universities to actually take that on and the Office for Students as well to properly regulate that and uh, push more universities to put that in place. Gosh, I mean, it's such an obvious idea. I can't believe it's not already been seized on by, by vice chancellors. <laughs> Chloe, lovely talking to you. Chloe Field, their vice president uh, from the National Union of Students. And I'm going to turn now uh, to Professor John Curtis, the, the polling guru, professor of politics at the University of Strathclyde to boot. Good morning to you, Sir John. Good morning to you, Matthew. Um, are we being overly cynical here at LBC, thinking that this could be a, that maybe they are mindful of the fact that uh, young people aren't going to vote Tory in an October election could be appealing for the Conservatives? I think, to be honest, uh, you are not alone in people being inclined to read too much into Jeremy Hunt's comments, which were about the difficulty that will face the next government if we have a, uh, an autumn election so far as getting a spending review in place by March of the following year. And because Mr. Hunt mentioned uh, October rather than the autumn, all of a sudden people have got yeah. to say, oh, do they, do they mean October? Now, the honest truth is the reason why we are anticipating November rather than October is for another very self-interested reason, which is that the Conservative Party, together with all the other political parties, have actually brought their party conferences forward to <laughs> yeah, earlier right. in, the, in, in the autumn um, and they now are quite important for the finances of all the political parties, and they don't want to lose them. So therefore, uh, if we go, let the, if the, all the parties hold their conferences with uh, the Conservatives ending on the 2nd of October, where Mr. Sunak would have his closing speech, then basically you work through the maths and we get to uh, the, the middle of November. And I don't think anything that Mr. Hunt said in any way gainsays that. Now, that said, I mean, it is right that... Um, basically, the movement of students to universities and in, and in different uh, rental property, properties while at university is the biggest mass movement that occurs in this country at any point in time. Um, and to that extent, at least, it does potentially cause a problem. But let, let, let's just stand back a little bit. Um, if we were to go back to the last time we had a general election in October, which is 50 years ago, at that point it would have been impossible for the students to get on the register as soon as they arrived at university. Because basically then we had a system of so-called household registration, uh, which happened in Octo uh, October or in the run-up to October, but uh, only took effect the following February. Now, uh, so uh, and, and by the way, you would not have been able to apply for a postal vote no, no, because, right. because you wanted a postal vote. So now that said, of course, there were many uni fewer university students 50 years ago, and like I said, it was less of a problem. So I think the, the perhaps, but that's I think there are perhaps two things we should say. I mean, I, I heard your uh, your argument, and it's an interesting argument, but I think there are two things we should make clear to listeners. The first is that. Even after an election is called, it will be possible for anybody still to apply to go on the register. True. The deadline is only about around just two weeks before polling day. And we, we have to get about four, uh, five weeks notice of a general election. So, and the Electoral Commission will certainly engage in a lot of activities it's done in the past, uh, persuading people to get on the register. So that's the first thing to realise. The second thing to realise, which you haven't mentioned at all, is that if if um, the student people who've just moved to university are um, on the re electoral register at home, they will still be able, even if they don't get themselves signed up onto the register at university, they will still be able to vote at home. Um, now, you're right, it might mean they have to travel home unless, of course, and this comes back to what you were talking about, they apply for a postal vote at their just. But again, by the way, anybody who thinks they're going to go to university, um, uh, they, they, they do well in their, their A-levels this summer, they can apply for a postal vote straight away. No, don't give any excuses. They can do, they, they could do it as soon as they're now going uh, uh, to university. Um, it, they might have to get the postal vote sent to home, but then they can get mum and dad to send it on. To very, them. very so, 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 that, so the point is, um, I mean, I, I hear what you say, yeah. and there, there are there are certainly controversies about 
the fact that with the introduction of so-called individual electoral registration, i.e. we as individuals can apply to go on the register, we don't have to rely on the head of household. There are arguments as to why the, uh, the universities were stopped from doing it, but as you've already been referring to, there are now ways around that. And probably certainly more controversial, and this will be new at this election, is the introduction of the requirement for people to prove their identity, yes, and in particular yes. the fact that Young, some from some form of young people's ID is not being accepted when it is for older people. That, there, there undoubtedly is a controversy.